What's up guys? So today, I'm not sure if you guys recognize this car behind me. This is Mike from Autovlog, the YouTube channel. This is his 2017, it might be a 2018. Either way, it's a C-Class AMG C63S Coupe. Now what we have going on today is Shane put a full front Expel clear bra on it. So fenders, hoods, mirrors, front bumper, grill are all covered in Expel. So what happens when you put clear bra film on a car? Well, unfortunately, you lose a little bit of depth and gloss with that film. Now, it has its perks because now the clear bra film is protecting against rock chips, stone chips, road debris, all sorts of hazards, especially on a black vehicle that will be directly affected from a little tiny stone hitting that front bumper. So the Expel, which is, I believe, eight mil thick, so it's pretty thick stuff, is on there to protect the front end of the car from things like that, especially Mike who drives his car a lot. We don't want any, you know, rock chips or anything happening to that. So, once you put a clear ball film on, you lose that kind of clarity. Most people, not a big deal. They have no idea the film's on there. But if you're a detail person like myself, or very picky, uh, you will notice that you will lose a little bit of clarity um, with that film on there. So. Mike said, hey, you know, what can we do to make this car even easier to maintain, get some of that gloss back, get that glass look. I want the paint to look just wet and glossy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a ceramic coating on. Now, technically a ceramic coating is called a silica coating. It is really silica, uh, a glass coating is the proper term, but in the industry, you just hear it called ceramic coating. So we're gonna be using Gion Mose. We're gonna do three base coats of Mose, which will give it a 9H certification on the hardness scale. And then we're gonna do a fourth layer of booster on top of that, which is a fluorine based top coating that will give extreme hydrophobic properties up to 12 months on top of the coatings already extremely hydrophobic properties and just will give it just that little bit of extra. So the booster is kind of just a nice little touch that I like to throw on there at the end. So we're gonna put that on top of the Expel and then right into the back of the car where there's just raw paint and it's gonna go on there. It should give this black car a really, really glossy and wet look. You'll see it probably the first 24 hours when the coating starts to cure. And then from about a week, I would say seven days, it'll keep curing and keep curing. And the gloss is just amazing. Even on silver cars or champagne colored cars, these coatings can really bring out a lot of gloss. So not only is it gonna bring out the gloss, it's gonna bring out a lot of protection against bird crap, um, water spots from acid rain or hard water, anything that can etch the paint. So what happens is if it were to etch, it's going to etch into the coating and that is a lot easier to fix with a slight polish and a recoat than, you know, let's say polishing, paint correcting, removing clear coat or wet sanding or painting a whole panel. So there's a couple different things that the coatings are used for. A lot of people mistake them with paint protection, a coating, because they hear the hardness or Ceramic Pro, they market it as a, a hard coating will protect against rock chips. Though it is true, it will help protect against small nicks and scratches and scuffs because of being harder, it will not protect against a big massive rock come flying up and hitting that coating. So what I like to do and what, what I like to recommend to people is say, look, get the clear brawl on there if you're really, really worried about the stone chips and then put the coating on top of the clear brawl so you're able to have the same properties that a coated car has with the gloss, with the extreme ease of cleaning. So we're gonna go ahead and do that today. I'm gonna show you the Mose kind of what I'm using and then I will show you the rear quarter panel there behind the door. I think that's a good panel to kind of show you the process on. So I hope you guys like it. As you can see, black is a very glossy color to begin with, and especially with this car being a new car, it's going to be great. I mean, there's not many paint defects. They're corrected. The car's glossy as it is. We have to wipe down. You can see some smudges on here. We'll have to get all that taken off, get it all totally clean and prepped so that Mohs can bond to the surface perfectly. Once that's prepped and good to go. We'll start the coating process. Again, we'll let it cure an hour in between each coat. We're gonna do three coats of Mohs, one coat of Booster, and let it cure for minimum of 24 hours. So that'll bring out some crazy gloss with this car and a lot of protection along with it on top of the clear bra. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, stay tuned. 
All right, so I have these things all in order how you would use them. So the first is Gion Prep. Now you can use any kind of alcohol IPA solution, 50-50 mix, but Gion Prep comes already kind of pre-made. You can get it. We're gonna go heavy with some coats on that and wipe that off. That's gonna remove any polishes, waxes, any paint correction that was done before the coating to kind of just get that surface truly clean for the coating to bond. Next is your Mohs kit. So there's a couple things in here. You have your applicator brick, your suede microfibers that are gonna wrap around this brick. You have a face mask because this stuff, you know, it just, it smells. You always wanna kind of just protect your lungs and everything. You have the Mohs itself. You have a dropper to apply onto here. I don't usually use the dropper, I just pour it on. You can, this kind of has a, a, a dropping um, orifice on there so you can just drop it on there. You have some stickers to show what it's protected with, some other stickers to go maybe on the glass or on the door, and then gloves. Always protect your skin when using these products. Here's the booster coating. This is the top coat that's gonna go on after the coating. So we're gonna do three coats of Mohs. We're gonna wait an hour in between each coat, and then we're gonna wait another hour, and then we're gonna do booster on top of that. The booster has the same application process as the Mohs using the brick and a clean suede applicator pad, again, using gloves. That'll dry. You're gonna buff off any remaining, which with a fluorine base, there's not gonna be much remaining. It evaporates fairly quickly, and uh, let that cure on there for a minimum of 24 hours when everything's done. The whole car is gonna cure for 24 hours, no rain, no water, nothing. It can get wet after that, but you know, I like to say the longer you can let it sit without getting wet, the better it's gonna be. And finally, I have two removal towels. Now these are brand new clean towels. One's gonna be to buff off any excess, and then you're gonna follow behind with another clean towel. I like to use kind of lower GSM towels. You can use super plush, it's preference, just you know, with the lower GSM, you wanna be careful that you're not scratching the paint or marring the surface. Again, why these are clean, that's important. So there's nothing on there, and you're gonna always kind of buff off in a straight line. That's just my preference of how I wanna do it but you know, you can use a, a super thick plush towel. I just, I think these towels work the best. When you're done with these towels, they get thrown away because the coating will dry on here and it can cause scratching. I mean, it is a glass coating, it's a silica coating, so it'll dry on here and kind of harden up on there and crystallize. So you don't want to use these then on, let's say, a perfectly painted car or, or your, your prized possession. You want to toss these out when you're done. So that's basically the kit. That's the sequence one, two, three we're going to use. We'll get the car prepped up here, get it all cleaned off, and then I will show you kind of on this panel how it's done, and I hope you guys enjoy. So we're going to go very heavy with the Gion Prep. I normally like to go heavy on this just because, A, it gives a little more lubrication so you don't scratch the surface, and B, I just like to make sure I'm really getting every um, grease, polish, anything off the surface, and I'm really cleansing it. So I move in basically straight lines, and you're going to, again, use two towels for this because it will streak up when you use heavy amounts of the prep. So straight lines, get as much of the surface clean as possible because it will affect the coating bonding. So straight lines, pulling everything off. Again, this is the prep process, and one major thing about coatings is the prep. If the prep is not done correctly, I'm not saying that the coatings will be impossible to put on, but it will make it more difficult. So spend the time right now to go over and prep the surface and make sure everything is ready to go, cleansed and ready to accept the coating. You can kind of see streaking there in the light on the panel so now we're using our clean microfiber and lightly very lightly just going through and buffing off any excess of the prep to get the streaking and everything away Little trick for you guys, cut little slits, I don't know if you can see this, in the brick. So when you lay this over top, you can pinch them in there and it holds the silk, the suede applicator in there so you're not having to grip it the whole time. So I usually take the block and just take an exacto and put about a quarter of an inch deep slice all the way through, midway through the block. 
So I like to go pretty heavy on the first coat of Mohs. As you go through and do your second and third coat, you don't have to go as heavy. You're going to apply in small areas in a cross hatching pattern. So go straight through. I like to break it up by body lines for the most part. But as you can see, we're going to do very fluid, smooth, straight line motions. And after you finish one coverage layer, you're going to go through and cross hatch. So here you can see it moving up and down and cross hatching. This is going to help level the coating and kind of remove any excess um, spotting that you would see. If you don't level the coating, it'll dry in what we call high spots. And those high spots look like buffing streaks or a leftover detail spray or quick waxes kind of when they dry on a hot car. So you're going to go through and cross hatch probably two, three times, really depends on the temperature and the humidity. It was pretty hot in here, so I went over it a couple times and it started flashing within 30 to 45 seconds. So I just leveled it as much as I could. So after about a 30 to 45 second flash time, you're gonna see the Gion Mohs start to kind of get an oil slick looking. Now it's not as heavy as some other coatings, but it will flash fairly quickly. And the nice thing about Mohs, at least in my personal opinion, is that it's very, very easy to take off. It's not a tacky coating, which is not a bad thing. It's just the way that it's developed. So Mohs comes off very easy, light pressure with the clean microfiber towel. Sometimes you'll need the second microfiber if you didn't level it enough. Again, so that cross hatching pattern that we did earlier really helps in the removal process of the coating. I like to step back, take a look, and then if I find the need, I will go back with the second clean towel and just kind of do a small pass to make sure we are evenly coated. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the car. It'll usually take about an hour when you take your time. It'll take a little longer to do a car if this is your first time doing it, but usually about an hour, hour and a half your first time in between each uh, layers or each coating layer. So go ahead, just take your time with it, break it up into panels at a time so you can keep track of it. You do not want this to flash too long. Gion Mose after about a minute and a half will be very tough to remove. It will turn it almost a gray haze and you will fight to remove it. So just take your time, work in small panels and you should have no problem. Well guys, now that you've seen the process, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the car. I'm gonna shut the camera off here because the battery's getting a little low. I'll wait 24 hours, let it cure a little bit and then bring the camera back tomorrow. I'm gonna finish the car, let it cure out and I'll show you guys the final results. Real quick, I don't know if you can hear this. We're gonna be very quiet here, but this is how smooth the surface is. You can't hear anything. Listen how smooth this paint is with the three base coat of Mohs and the top coat of Booster. You guys aren't gonna hear anything. That's the point, listen. I mean, it just glides. Here, one finger. Barely any pressure. I'm sure this would just fall right off the car, so yeah. Well guys, the car has been completed. We have three coats of Gion Mose, one top coat of Booster, and it came out really, really nice. So. The car has to sit in here for another 24 hours at least to let it cure out. It can't get wet, can't get any water spots or anything like that. So it's gonna sit in here, cure, and for the next, I would say, seven to 10 days, it's gonna keep getting glossier and glossier, but already you can see quite a difference. I'll do a little walk around for you. That about wraps it up for this video. Mike, I hope you like it, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.